What up, Poker Fam? Bearded Poker here. Take a while, guess where we're at. That's right, we're at Windstar. Getting our energy drink in, and uh, we're about to jump on a session. Here with some friends, here to have a good time. Rack it up, let's go. Even though the poker room is on the other side of the casino, I really like walking through the building and just checking out all the lights and all the displays that they have here at Windstar. If you haven't figured it out by now, I am a Dallas Cowboys fan. Sorry, but not sorry. And every once in a while, I'll stop by at one of the many bars that they have here and grab myself a drink or two, just to loosen up before the game. But of course, you're not here for the lights, right? You're not here for the displays. You're here for the poker. So let's jump on the table. Let's get in the mix. We're jumping on the one, two, no limit table, buying in for the max of $200. Let's go. Okay, starting this hand off, we have King Jack suited in the under the gun position. I hit the record button a little late. As you can tell here, we let out for $15. Under the gun one has other plans in mind and he decides to three bet me to $50. Everyone eventually folds all the way to the button and the button, he decides not to call and not to fold. He actually decides on a four bet. That's right. This is my second hand in, and we're already seeing a three bet and a four bet. He four bets to $130. So obviously action back on me. With King Jack suited, this hand went from decently playable to not playable at all, especially when I'm gonna be in a very bad position with two opponents behind me. I don't feel very confident about this hand, so easy fold on my part. And my opponent to my left under the gun one decides on just a call. So they are actually gonna be going heads up to the flop. The flop comes out 963 with two spades. And under the gun one decides to take the initiative and he decides on a shove. The opponent quickly calls and immediately flips over his hand. And as you can tell, under the gun one, my opponent to my left is not very happy. It's a queens versus aces battle. They run it out. Turn is an ace of diamonds, which pretty much puts him dead in his tracks. And the river is a deuce, I believe, of clubs. Under the gun one pays up and the button takes it all down. Right after that, under the gun one decides he's done. He's pissed off. He decides to leave. So as you can tell, action early on, barely starting my session. There's already three bets and four bets. We're Delta Premium here with four deuce offsuit in the big blind. That's right. Limps all the way to us and I decide to go ahead and check my option. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop. Flop comes out six, five, ace with two hearts. So we have a gut shot and that's about it. I decide to lead out for $10 after it checks to me and they all make the call. I was hoping to take this pot down, but that's not the case. Turn comes out the eight of clubs, which does improve us to a double cutter. I decide to check and it checks all the way around. River is the deuce of hearts. I wanna represent the flush here since everyone's showing weakness. And after it checks to me, I decide to lead out for $20. And one by one, they all decide on a fold. So we take this pot down with our tight image and pure aggression. Alrighty, on to the next hand. We have queen jack of spades in the cutoff position. Limps to me a few ways, and I decide to bump it up to $10. I get two callers from both the big blind and the hijack. So we're gonna be going three ways to this flop. And the flop comes out fairly well for us. Queen, five, three, rainbow. We have top pair, decent kicker. Big blind and the hijack decide on a check to me. And I decide to lead out here for $10. I wanna get some kind of value from my top pair, decent kicker. And both of my opponents decide to make the call. So we're going three ways to the turn. The turn comes out the six of hearts. Flush draw and the straight draw do get there. Big blind decides to lead out for $20. And I decide on a call. River comes out the 10 of hearts. So the backdoor flush does get there. And at this point, I just want to get the showdown. So I find it pretty interesting when my opponent checks to me. And I've seen him do this in occasions where he does check raise opponents off their hand. I decide just to take my free river card and he shows ace five offsuit with the ace of hearts. So we go ahead and scoop this pot, but I have a feeling that I did leave a little value on the table, maybe because I was playing scared. 
who knows? Comment down below and let me know. On to the next hand. Next hand of note, we have Jack-10 offsuit on the button. I raise it up to $12 after it limps a couple of ways to me and I get only one collar from the hijack. So we're going heads up to the flop and the flop comes out queen jack five rainbow. So we have middle pair and also a gut shot, but that's about it. My opponent checks to me and I decide to continuation bet for $15. He tanks for a bit and makes the call. The turn comes out the king of hearts. So a flush draw is now on the board, but we do have an open-ended straight draw improving with either an ace or a nine. He checks once again, and I decide to lead out for $20 this time, expecting my opponent to fold, but instead he makes the call. So some red flags are popping up in my head right now. Hopefully there's no heart on the river. The river comes the two of clubs. So the flush draw breaks out. He checks and I decide to check behind. Looking back, I think this is a mistake. Most likely the reason behind my check was I was putting my opponent on a queen. So this is my way of pretty much giving up and not wanting to lose any more money. He says I have a pair and I tell him I have a pair as well. I show him my jack and he says that's good and he folds. In hindsight, I don't know if I would have been able to get any more money out of him. It may have been pointless, but who knows? Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. On to the next hand. All righty, we're finally dealt a premium here with pocket aces and we're in the big blind. Limps five ways to me and this is definitely not gonna be enough. I bump it up to $20. And we get three callers from hijack, cutoff, and the button. So since they did not three bet us, I'm assuming that they have some kind of hand such as tens or jacks, maybe even some suited connectors or suited over cards. So we're feeling pretty good here, going four ways to the flop. The flop comes out king five three with two diamonds. Interesting board as there are a lot of gut shots that are gonna enjoy this board, such as an ace four of diamonds for an example. Uh, any king queen of diamonds, king jack of diamonds, and hands of the sword, this board's gonna be hitting their range. So I go with the sizing of $80. A little big of a bet, but Again, I want to charge the max for these draws. If they're going to want to draw to a diamond, they're going to have to pay for it. One by one, all my opponents decide on a fold. So a little disappointing there. I was hoping to get at least one caller to come along. Interestingly enough, the button when he folded, he showed face up that he had the king of diamonds. So I'm a little surprised that he did not decide to come along. Being the fact that he has top pair, he had a draw to the backdoor flush draw. So little disappointing maybe if i sized down to like 50 dollars um somewhere 50 to 60 dollars he might have seen the benefit of making the call but as play this is what we do and we scoop an 80 dollar pot all right on to the next hand all right in the next hand i have 10 six spades in the cutoff limps all the way to me and i decide to limp in button and small blind decide to come along i'm going six ways to the flop and the flop comes out nine seven three rainbow we do have a gut shot, but that's about it. Middle position decides to lead out for $10. I decide to make the call, and so does the button and small blind. So now four ways to the turn. The turn comes out the four of clubs. This does complete the rainbow, so we do not have an opportunity to hit a flush. Middle position decides to lead out once again for $20. I tank for a bit and decide with the call. Reasoning behind my call is I have a double gutter, improving to a straight with either an eight or a five. And I'm getting a pretty good price to make the call as well. Roughly about 3.6 to one. Both the button and the small blind decide on a fold. So heads up to the river. River comes out the three of clubs. He checks this time. After showing so much aggression throughout the streets, it's interesting that he decides on a check on the river. So now back to me, I obviously don't have anything here except for 10 high. So I figured this is the opportunity for me to go for a bluff. There's a lot of coordination on the board. If I bet out here, it'll be enough to push him to fold. So I decided to go with a sizing of $60. Yeah, that's what I decided to go with. Looking back, this was a bad sizing. If I'm gonna make a bluff at this, I really gotta sell it. I should have let out for maybe $100 or even a shove. He tanks for a bit and decides with the call. That's right. 
And even better news, he shows 7 6 offsuit. Yeah, that's right. He took it down with a pair of sevens. We do get involved in another hand with this particular opponent later on. Alrighty, on to the next hand. This next hand involves my good friend who came along with me to Windstar. I'm not going to mention his name, but I'll refer to him as my buddy throughout this hand. Moving on, we have Ace Queen offsuit in the big blind. Folds all the way to the button who limps in, small blind limps in, and I decide to bump it up to $12. My buddy who's in the under the gun position is the only caller and everyone else folds. So we're going heads up with my buddy to the flop and the flop comes out 10-3-3. Pretty dry board, it is paired however, and I do have two over cards, so I decide to lead out for $15. My buddy makes the call. The turn is a seven of diamonds. I remember writing in my notes that it is a rainbow board. So for all accounts, it's a safe card. I decide to lead out for $25 here, pretty much wanting to take this pot down, push him off the hand, but instead he makes the call. The river comes the five of diamonds. I decide to check here, pretty much giving up on this hand. We haven't improved in any way, except we have ace high. This time he takes the betting lead, but only leads out for $15. And the way he did it was pretty interesting. I tanked for a bit, kind of um, thinking about the way he put that bet out there. And I'm thinking it through, does he have a 10 or a three? Not too sure. He pretty much plays with any cards. Even though I feel like this should be a fold, in my mind, $15, he's just giving me way too good of a price to make the call. So after some thinking, I decide I'm gonna make the call. And he shows king nine offsuit. Yeah, he had king high. So we win with our ace high and I scoop this pot down. Sorry, buddy, got you on this one. Maybe next time. Alrighty, on to the next and final hand of the vlog. In my opinion, I've saved the best for last. In the last vlog, I introduced Chip, crazy hand in play. Hijack will be the main opponent of this hand. He is also the same guy who read through my bluff earlier when I had 10 six of spades. Moving along, I have king queen of spades in the under the gun position. I raise it up to $15. Under the gun one, hijack and big blind make the call. Four ways to the flop, and the flop comes out jack 10 seven rainbow. Big blind checks to me. I decide to see bet for $25 with my open ended straight draw and hijack is the only caller to come along. Heads up to the turn, and the turn is another 10. I tank for a bit, thinking that this card is probably better for me than my opponent, but ultimately decide on a check. I guess I was wanting to get to the river cheaply, but hijack has other plans, and without too much thought, he jams all in for his remaining $270 stack. I pause for a bit to think about all the hands that my opponent could be possibly doing this with. I mean, he did get us earlier with 9-7, right? And then he did get another guy with queen four suited and ace five off suit. I also ask him during this time of thought, if I fold, would he show? He verbally says nothing, but he shrugs his shoulders and nods yes. So adding all this information up, I decide on the hero call. Hoping to improve on the river, the river comes the two of diamonds. It doesn't help us at all, and all we have is king high here. But as the river card was coming out, I looked at my opponent, and he didn't look too happy with this river card, and he actually doesn't even want to show his hand. Eventually, the dealer points at him to show his hand, and he shows king queen offsuit. And we end up chopping this hand. It's pretty crazy. The table erupts. Check it out. Wow. Oh. <laughs> My ace would have been wow. good on that. Can't believe you. You're supposed to know what you say. Okay. Well, I'll show. That's pretty good. He was such a cool guy too, and he said you should have folded, man. I said no way, man. Not with the hands you've been playing with. Well, that's the whole point of poker, right? Poker can be pretty, uh, pretty competitive. Uh, it can be frustrating exhilarating i mean all the emotions above but at the end of the day that's why we play the game 
Shortly after this hand, we decide to grab our chips and head to the cage to cash out. And as we're walking to the cage, that particular opponent actually comes up to me and he fist taps me and tells me, hey man, that was a sick call. Pretty impressive how you read through that. So I found that pretty humbling and pretty awesome that someone would take the time to tell me that. So this ends the session. Hope y'all enjoyed this hand. Like I said, it was a chip. Crazy hand in play. We're out of here. What a session, what a game. At, so I bought him for $200 and at my high point, I actually had 310. So I had about $110 in profit. Lost a nasty hand uh, when I turned the straight and then my opponent rivered the flush. And then I won it back and then this really interesting hand where I had king queen of spades and my opponent ships it all in on the turn. I was open-ended with jack 10 on the flop and the river comes a deuce, I believe. And he doesn't want to show his hand. So I wait for him to show and he shows, he shows king queen of uh, offsuit. So <laughs> we ended up chopping that pot. He couldn't believe that I made that call after he showed me. So great call on me. Uh, he had been playing really weird throughout the entire session. So I was able to pick up on it. All right, we are out. That was, uh, that was an interesting session, a tough session. We were up and down. As mentioned, when I was inside, we were up 310 at the high point and it looks like everything was going great. We had got dealt pocket aces twice and you know, I thought things were going good. And then things took a turn for the worse. I uh, lost a nasty hand. Don't know if I made good decisions. There was an opportunity for me to bluff and uh, rip it all in, but I didn't take that opportunity. Even my opponent said, had, had you had shoved, I would have folded. So, and it was that same opponent who was giving us trouble towards the end of the night. So, but other than that, uh, like I said, we end up profiting $37. Uh, doesn't sound like much, but with uh, we played really strategic. We didn't let our frustration, we didn't let our tilt affect our game towards the end and we were able to bump it all the way back up i think we were at our low point we had like 105 in our stack and we bumped it all the way back up to 237. so not a bad way to bounce back um pretty proud of how i played towards the end you know got to celebrate the small wins and that's what i'm doing tonight so thank you for tuning in guys thank you for checking out the content uh if you like what you see here please give me a thumbs up start so we can start putting my content out there so more people can see it and subscribe i'd really appreciate it all right beardy poker out have a good night